Greetings, church. Brothers and sisters, I would like to encourage you that God is in control. He has perfect timing. I'd like to read through Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41 in the ICB version. Jesus stops the storm. That evening, Jesus said to his followers, come with me across the lake. And he and his followers left the people there. They went in the boat that Jesus was already sitting in. There were also other, other boats with them. A very strong wind came up on the lake. The waves began coming up and the sides into the boat. It was almost full of water. And Jesus was at the back of the boat sleeping with his head on a pillow. The followers went to him and woke him. They said, teacher, do you care about us? We will drown. Jesus stood up and commanded the wind and the waves to stop. He said, quiet, be still. Then the wind stopped and the lake became calm. Jesus said to his followers, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And the followers were very afraid and asked each other, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So this Thursday we were out in the lake. We have this little river boat. And we took the, we took the whole family. And it was very sunny on Thursday, if everybody remember, but it was windy. So when we got the boat out in the water, it was choppy waters. And having a little river boat, it's a little uh, nerve-wracking. So we were out there, and the kids were swimming. It was hot. And I was thinking about this story I just read to you. I was thinking about it, and maybe an hour later, we see a storm coming. And I look on the radar, and actually, there was this big storm coming, and we had to go full throttle back to the boat launch. And the storm was coming towards us, and we were actually going towards the storm to get to the boat launch. And this is a small river boat, so you can imagine we weren't going too fast. We have all these people passing, trying to get to the boat launch. And it was way, the waves were, were getting bigger, and it was splashing onto the boat. We were all kind of praying inside. And we got to the boat launch. And we got to the boat launch. We strapped the boat. We get in the truck. And all of a sudden, the rain starts. We literally missed it by seconds. It, was in, it happened in just perfect timing. Jesus was right on time. In verse 39, Jesus stood up and commanded the wind and the waves to stop. He said, quiet, be still. Then the wind stopped and the lake became calm. Disciples were afraid of the storm. And Jesus said to his followers, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Jesus is trying to build their faith. Because we know in, when we read Hebrews 11, 29 through 34, it says, it was by faith the people crossed the Red Sea as if it were dry land. The Egyptians also tried to do it, but they were drowned. It was by faith that the walls of Jericho fell. They fell after the people had marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days. It was by faith that Rahab, the prostitute, welcomed the spies and was not killed with those who refused to obey God. Do I need to give you more examples? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the, and the prophets. Through their faith, they defeated kingdoms. They did what was right and received what God promised. They shut the mouth of lions. They so stopped great fires and were saved from being killed with a sword. They were weak and yet were made strong. They were powerful in battle and defeated other enemies. Through their faith, they were weak and yet were made strong. We are afraid because we lack in faith. Why is it sometimes that children show greater faith? Is it because they understand their weakness or their inability a good friend of mine was driving over julian i uh, was driving julian pike over towards black machine over going over julian uh, mountain 
And as he was going into Julianne on Julian Pike, if anybody took that route, it's pretty steep. And towards the end, there's almost like a 90-degree turn. He was driving with his wife and a five-year-old daughter. And they were driving on their RV, this big house on wheels. And then the brakes went out, like the worst thing that could happen. The brakes went out on this RV. So after they wrecked completely, this thing was totaled. They barely survived. He found his wife, and they couldn't find their five-year-old child. They found the child, and she was okay amongst the rubble. And they later asked her, were you afraid? And she said, no. They're like, why? Because Jesus was holding me. They're like, what? Yes, Jesus was holding me, she said. Jesus said to the followers, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? God is in control. He has perfect timing. We must trust in Jesus and believe that everything happens for a reason. Especially for us Christians. We must know that and believe that. That every delay is from the Lord. I, t I, I preach it all the time. Because I heard it once said, it said, every delay is from the Lord. Every time there's a delay, we have to know it's from the Lord. That Thursday when we went to the boat, earlier that day we had a prayer meeting. And as I was, I was actually late to this prayer meeting. I was rushing to this church, and I opened the door, and this church is located where people can walk by. And I'm about to go into the side of this church. And I see a person I know. And I, and I stop. And I say, how, how are you? And we started talking. He said, really bad. He said, storms, of, storms have come in my life, and it's, it's really hard. And the next thing we know, he's in our prayer group. He wasn't planning it. He's in our prayer group being encouraged. And, and we were praying for him that, that God may calm the storms that are attacking him. He said, what a coincidence. I didn't expect to be here. But we understand that there is no coincidence with God. He has everything under control. There are three scenarios that storms really uh, kind of happen in our life. When the storm comes, sometimes God protects us before the storm. There's times when he protects us in the midst of the storm. He calms the sea, and sometimes he allows us to go through the storm. All to build our faith. So for the first one, when he allows us to be protected before the storm, like in the scenario that we had with our, our family, he protected us, and last minute, right before the storm came, he protected us, and we were safe inside the car. And the second one, as we were praying in the meeting for that gentleman who was going through storms, that God may calm those, those storms in his life. And the third is when, when my friend was going and wrecked on the RV with his family, God protected him through the storm. Jesus wants to grow our faith. And sometimes we go through the storm, and it's not only to build our faith, it's sometimes to build the faith of others around us. For instance, we see Daniel, and, and through, uh, through the Old Testament, we see Daniel and his friends, they went through a lot of storms, and God led them through the, to build the faith of those around them. And we see sometimes, we, he allows us to go through the storm to reveal what's in our heart, for instance, in the case of Job. When I find myself in a storm, I ask myself these things, and I pray about three questions to the Lord. I ask, is this because of my sin that the storm has come upon me? Is it because it's there to build my faith? Or is it there to build the faith of those around me? I, every time there's a storm, I ask these things to the Lord because I want to know. Because if it's sin, I can repent of it and be restored. And if it's to build my faith, I can, I can uh, strengthen, be strengthened by, uh, by God's promises and get through it. And if it's to build others around me, I have to trust in God, knowing that, that God will get me through the situation. And if it's because of sin, first thing we do is we repent. A young man was talking on, this week, a young man who was going through so many things in his life. Storm after storm. And he was talking to me on the phone. And, and he was asking for advice. And I was telling him different things or tips and and things I could help him with. But then I stopped and I said, how is your relationship with Jesus? He said, I don't have a relationship with Jesus anymore. I'm like, that's it? There, you start there. He was telling me all his problems. But 
The solution's right there. I said, stop everything that you're doing and restore your relationship with Jesus. That's the most important part. Restore your relationship and everything is going to be okay. No matter what you're going through, you're going to be with Jesus and he will protect you. Disciples were afraid of the storm. Now they were very afraid of Jesus who controls the storm. The followers were very afraid and asked each other, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The storms of this life are nothing compared to the power of the one who holds them in his hands. So restore your relationship with Jesus first. Repent, believe, and you will be saved. When we see the storms coming, we must trust that God will either protect us from the storm, protect us in in the midst of the storm, or get us through and strengthen us and protect us after. For as men and women and children of faith, we must acknowledge our weakness and believe in the power of God. Then no matter what storm comes our way, we will know that God has perfect timing and that God is in control. Jesus stood up and commanded the wind and the waves to stop. And he said, quiet, be still. Then the wind stopped and the lake became calm. God has perfect timing. God is in control. Amen. Let's pray.